the Vikings came out of the gate falling flat on their face, losing five of their first six games. But they have picked up a head of steam, winning four out of their last five, mainly in part to the do-it-all back, Dalvin Cook. Cook has all the traits of an elite back. Track speed, elite vision, powerlifting strength, great hands, and the ability to cut on a dime. His vision and cutting ability pair perfectly with Gary Kubiak's zone run scheme, helping maximize Dalvin Cook's talent. The bread and butter of Kubiak's offense is the outside zone, which coincidentally is Dalvin Cook's favorite play. Here's a basic outside zone left. All linemen will step to the play side, but the responsibility may differ. If covered up, the linemen play as they traditionally would, taking the man head up to them. If uncovered, the lineman is responsible for the gap to the play side. The play is designed to get to the edge to pick up a big gain, so Dalvin aims his dive at the C gap. Because this play is designed to get wide, the defense can often overcommit, so running backs are taught to read the gaps from play side to back side, and then hit the open hole. The Vikings have a wrinkle called here, running Adam Thielen on a jet motion to make the linebackers hesitate. Reggie Ragland blitzes, which plays into the Vikings' hands as the left tackle knows he has no responsibility and can help out the guard. A huge hole opens up in the C-gap, and Dalvin accelerates through, making a cut upfield and drags Jamie Collins for a gain of 12. Kubiak loves the outside zone so much, he calls it here with just 27 seconds left in the half. A great play to get them a more secure field goal attempt and counter the line's 6 DB personnel. Dalvin takes the handoff, picking up a nice block by his left tackle, and then beats the DB to the edge, gaining a nice chunk of yardage and getting out of bounds. Against the Titans, Cook will show off his elite speed on this outside zone to the weak side. Cook is too quick for the penetrating one tech, and then shows off good vision to follow his blocks and make a nice cut, forcing two Titan defenders to collide. When you have a team over pursuing on the outside zone, you can hit them with the inside zone, and Cook is just as lethal on these inside and split zone runs. The same rules apply for blocking on the inside zone. However, Cook reads it differently. He's going to aim his dive at the playside A gap, and if this is cut off, he reads the backside A gap and then the backside C gap. With the A gaps filled, Cook makes a nice jump cut to get to the C gap before getting skinny and weaving his way for a touchdown. And this is a textbook execution on this split zone. Basically, split zone is a regular inside zone, but the line leaves a weak side end for the tight end to crack back. This opens up a massive hole for Cook, who immediately plants his foot and sprints through the hole untouched for six. In week eight, Cook gashed Green Bay all game on split zone runs. On this second seven, Cook is going to pick up a nice chunk of yardage in the shadow of his end zone. Kyle Rudolph blocks down the four tech, and Irv Smith kicks out the outside backer, creating a huge hole for Dalvin to find. Now one on one, and that means broken ankles, as Cook picks up 17. Here's another example against Green Bay, this time from week one. The Packers have a clear advantage, eight defenders versus seven blockers, and they quickly plug up Cook's first read, the A-gap. Dalvin spots the open cutback lane, however, after the jump cut, finds himself with two Green Bay backers there to wrap him up. No worries as he breaks both tackles with another jump cut before rumbling for a 12-yard gain. A play Gary Kubiak loves to call is the toss. Another perfect pairing with Dalvin Cook, putting the ball in his hands quickly and taking advantage of his best trait, his elite vision. They love this play so much, it was actually the opening run of the season. Here it is versus the Lions, with the Vikings first motion Rudolph in tight. Cook takes the pitch and immediately sees the linebacker over committing and a wide open B gap. He cuts in following a superb block by Ham and picks up another chunk. Here's another great run and a brilliant play call by Kubiak. The Titans are lined up expecting to run to the right, so rather than try to run into nine guys in the box, he calls an open weak side toss forcing a one-on-one -on -one open field tackle versus Dalvin Cook. And I think we know who wins this battle. Cook hits Harold Landry with a little hezzy, and then shows off three great jukes before heading out of bounds. And against the Seahawks, but this time out of a twin tight end look. The left tackle does a horrible job at attempting to block Bobby Wagner, who has a good shot at Cook. 
yet Cook will show off his elite lateral quickness, making his angle just too difficult for Wagner, before powering through an arm tackle for a gain of 10. And this is just an absurd display of his playmaking abilities. It's another weak toss like we saw before, but with the added wrinkle of faking the jet sweep to Thielen. Detroit appears to play this perfectly, with the weak side corner coming off the edge, however, the other edge defender is going to overcommit. But no worries, as they have a player ready to make a tackle for a loss. Except, this is Dalvin Cook we're talking about, who without any space, leave the defender looking for his soul before bursting up the open lane, scoring up the safety, then falling forward for a big gain. Of course, this is a modern day offense and Cook doesn't run exclusively these plays. This is just the base of the offense. The Vikings love to incorporate a mix of power, counter, and draws to keep defenses honest. And like the elite back he is, Cook also excels here. Without a doubt, the biggest fan of Dallin Cook is Kirk Cousins. Not only is he a prolific pass catcher and a staunch blocker, when Dalvin's getting his 25 plus touches, it alleviates so much pressure off Cousins. Defenses are forced to bring an extra defender from coverage into the box, setting up easy throws for Kirk. When you're a threat both catching the ball and as a decoy, you know we're talking about an elite back. On their Monday night matchup, the Bears committed to stopping Cook, and they did a really good job when Hakeem Nix was healthy. Yet, this allowed for some great opportunities for play-action throws by Cousins. This play was set up in large part by Kubiak running this play-action from the exact same look as the power run. Motioning CJ Ham across the backfield, the Bears' end never sees Cousins keeping it, giving them all day to connect with Jefferson on this deep comeback. And in the passing game, Cook is a threat. On this screenplay, pay attention to Cook's vision. He follows two great downfield blocks by his linemen, cuts inside to pick up another good block from his right guard, then cuts again to avoid another tackle, before turning on the afterburners for 6. Here's a great play design to get Cook the ball on a swing route. The Texans are in zone on the play side, meaning there will be no one taking Cook on the swing. This is essentially an extension of the outside run, as the center is a yard downfield, ready to throw Cook a lead block. Against the Packers, the Vikings are facing a third and long and need to convert, something they did not do well in week one. Green Bay is playing a tight zone cover four, shutting down the trip side, so Cousins is forced to dump it off to Cook who is four yards behind the line of scrimmage. Once he catches the ball, there are four defenders closing in on him. So, Cook cuts inside on the catch, leaving the linebacker lost. He gives a burst of speed before cutting back outside and then falling forward for a gain of 13. This play is all on Dalvin. Again, he gets involved in a passing game on a check down. Cousins will dump it off to Cook, who hits Collins with a dirty stop and go for a big pickup. Dalvin isn't used much for pass blocking because it's counterintuitive to have your best playmaker out of the play. On the majority of passing plays, Cook is either split out wide or slipping out of the backfield for a check down or on a design route. However, when called upon to block for his quarterback, he's pretty good at that as well. On this play, he does an amazing job taking on the blitzing corner coming off the edge, giving Cousins just enough time to deliver a great throw to Jefferson. Watch again as he sees the DB coming pre-snap, runs over to the right side, and then puts the defender on his ass. In their matchup against Seattle, Cook is going to stay in and block against the Seahawks blitz. Seattle is in a nickel look and will bring pressure from the Vikings left side with KJ Wright coming through the B-gap. Cook knows that if he tries to take Wright head on, he's going to get put on his ass. So he chops him at the waist, allowing Cousins to make a throw for the first down. One more time versus Green Bay, and this time on a third and eight. The Packers are bringing six, with four rushers coming off the right side. Cook stands tall, picking up the edge rusher as Cousins finds BB on a drive concept. So Cook has all the elite traits of a top tier running back, paired with a scheme that fits his skill set to perfection. So what's his downside? Well, the biggest concern I have about Dalvin is his longevity. And yes, that's a compliment. If the only thing you can say about a player is his health concerns, you are talking about a special player. He's been injured a lot in his short career, playing in 29-48 games going into the season, and has missed one game already this year. 
With the amount of touches he's getting in Minnesota, I fear they may run him into the ground. I hope he's able to stay healthy, because he is a generational talent, as well as being an incredibly fun back to watch, even going back to his college days. If he's able to fight off the injury bug, he has a chance to go down as an all-time great. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, why not check out our breakdown on Cook's teammate Justin Jefferson and how he's a future star, or how James Robinson has become a fantasy stud.